In this video we're going to be taking a look at how we can build better game res geometry inside of Maya. So the last video we took a look at how to take our high res model from ZBrush, decimate it down, and be able to export those out as FBX so we can bring it into an external program. Now the process that we're going to be taking a look at is a thing called resurfacing. So I'm going to take this crate export, I'm just going to hide this, and we're going to import in our models from ZBrush. So I'm going to go ahead and navigate to where that sits. And so I'm going to just import as an FBX crate bottom or crate bottom high deci that we had from the last video, and we'll import that in. And because it's a pretty high res mesh, it'll take just a little bit to import that in. And you can see it's going to give us a little status bar down here at the bottom. Now, as I try to import this in, I do remember that Maya has a problem. If you try to import something in that has the same name as uh, what already exists within here, this crate bottom and top, Maya has a problem with that. So one thing we could do is a little workaround. If you hold down Shift and you click on the Maya icon down here, it'll open another version of Maya for you. And so off screen, it's opening another version. As soon as this opens up, I'm going to pull it over to this window. We'll take a look at it and uh, we can have two versions of Maya open. Now I can do the file import like this with the FBX options like this and we'll import and let me drag this over onto the screen here. We'll go to workspace root and I'll go up and go to the FBX and so we've got this crate bottom high deci like this imported in and here we go again take just a second. Um, what I'm going to do is once it imports in, we'll uh, be able to copy and paste it between the two different uh, versions of Maya that we have here. Okay, so you can see that we've got our crate imported in here like this. Let's go ahead and import in the top of our crate as well. And then we'll have the entire create in a high-res format inside of Maya. Now what I would like to do is uh, there's a blend material that we could make for this and we could check out the modeling quality of this so we could just uh, select the object right click on there and say assign new material if it's a new scene we'll drag this over and we in Maya and we'll just click blend and I'll show you the options for this I'm just going to take this specular color and then drag it all the way to the right for that um, once that material is made, we can select this object mode again, right click and say object mode, and then we can right click and say assign existing material, and we can say blend, and we've got the blend on there, and then we can check out the modeling quality that we have for this thing. We don't need these poly groups that it uh, pushes over, so we can select those and delete them in the outliner. So we got a crate bottom and top, and we can select both of those, hit control G and group those, and we call this uh, crate high res and underscore deci or decimated. Uh, you can make up your own naming convention for that, but uh, you know you might want to just use something like that. Now if you see any really weird edges in here, some hard edges, you might select the model and right click on it. Um, I'm sorry, shift right click and we'll say soften harden edges and pull there and say soften edge. So again, shift right click, soften harden edge, soften edge and once we do an operation we can select the this part and just tab G for the last command for it you can see it's going to build up a little bit of history so we can go edit delete by type history and we can select this one edit delete by type history hold shift D is the hotkey for that and now we have this high-res crate that we can um, push over to the other other version. Now we could stay directly in this this version, just start calling it the resurface version, but if we want to put it in there, I'm going to show you just, we can select this and hit control C for copy, and then we go to our other version of Maya that we have, and everything's kind of hidden here, and just hit control V. Now it'll paste it in, it puts it in this group, creates this pasted, because it doesn't, again, it doesn't like to have things having the same name. We can ungroup this from here. So we can go edit and we can say ungroup or you could select it and hit shift P, um, however you want to do this. And 
we can call this uh it it did lose its naming convention for some reason so i'm gonna hit undo i want to i want to keep this here i'm going to get rid of this part here this pasted and um, we can middle mouse drag this out as well and we can get rid of this group we don't need it anymore and we can get rid of the whole pasted in the uh, front of this and I told you it doesn't like things that have the same name but if they're in a group it allows you to do that and so then now we've got our model inside of here and everything's in that same scene that we were kind of building off of before so I'm just gonna save this real quick I'm gonna say save scene as and I'm gonna call this one um, I think we're on the eighth video for this um, maybe maybe the ninth um, I might have to change the name of this a little bit later but I'm gonna call this model to create high res like this and again you can use your own naming convention for what you want for these things but I think that's gonna help me keep things straight so now I've got the model inside of uh, in inside of Maya from ZBrush the next part I'm going to show you is something from the modeling toolkit so I'm gonna just select the crate bottom and hide it control H and that's under display we can show or hide selections within there hide selections and we can show selections and I'm just using hotkeys for that stuff if we select this thing we can click this um, magnetic icon and this makes the surface live and it lets anything that you uh, put in here any operation that you do to it as far as like making new geometry and things like that it'll stick to the surface so we're gonna look at the modeling toolkit right here we're gonna open this thing up and we're gonna look at the quad draw tool this tool is a pretty cool tool um, it lets you lay out a point 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 and if you hover your cursor over it and hold down shift anytime you have quad quads four points you can make a polygon out of this and again we're sticking to this live surface so I'm just clicking point point and then I can hold down shift and we can add that right there like this and very quickly I could work my way around this model so you can keep laying out points if you kind of know what you're doing you could lay out some points like this and let's hold down shift and you can even hold down shift and drag out now sometimes Maya works well with this sometimes not now if you need to rearrange a point and move it around you can click on the point and you can see how if I drag it down here on this bottom part here it's actually sticking to that surface like this and through there so another thing you can do is if you can hold down tab and you can middle mouse drag an edge like this and that will drag out new geometry and so I could put this in here and put this on the corner hold down tab middle mouse drag this out and you can see it's always snapping if you get some extra points on there that you just don't need you can see you can clear the dots on there so it's really up to you however however you want to do this and I'm going to show you real quick after I get this kind of laid out right here let's go right there like this and here and hold down shift after adding those points one thing you can do is hold down shift and you can relax on the geometry that you have and it tries to even out the spacing of the geometry that you have and it still tries to stick to the surface you gotta be a little bit careful if you get too heavy-handed with things it could cause some issues and cause some problems so I'm just relaxing these points in through here like this and I'm gonna click and drag this on here and I'm gonna click and drag here and I'm still trying to just hold down shift and relax on there it's uh, having some trouble with that part um, one thing you could do if I if I run into an issue like this I might have to delete out 
um, one of these faces in here. To delete a face out, you can hold down Control and Shift, and you can see it's going to delete that part out. You can delete edges, or you can try to delete a face out. And you might have to rebuild that part again. And I know that's not the most fun thing, but uh, sometimes you might encounter some problems like that. Now, once this is built, you can see that we can hold down Control and click and drag, and we can add new pieces of geometry like this pretty quickly. And it's always sticking to the surface. Now, you can build up your geometry count pretty quickly doing something like that. Um, I was saying that we can hold down uh, tab and if we left mouse we can just drag out one uh, polygon from this and it'll try to snap to this. The other thing that we can do is if we want to do an entire edge loop and this doesn't want to work so great, tab middle mouse and it'll try to drag out the entire edge loop all the way around and drag that thing out. But sometimes with the geometry, you just might be having some issues. So you might just draw these points like you see here, like this. And I'm going to keep clicking and adding the geometry. Add it right here in the corner. Right here like this. And then now we've got something um, like this. And we can start adding points like what you see here. Sometimes you have to rotate around to kind of get um, Maya to kind of recognize these points. So if it's just not working at the particular angle, maybe try uh, rotating around the model a little bit. And you can see how I'm trying to build a pattern that will work all the way across this. So here you can see I got one span and here I got two. So I can just hold down control and add a new span there. And then I add these points, point, and holding down shift like this. And so I know as you uh, start with this process, you're not going to be quite as quick with this. So I'm just holding down shift again. And here's where I can hold down shift and then just we lack some of these points and it kind of uh, does a nice job of evening out the spacing of this. And I can manually drag these around too if I want to get a more exact fit that I'm kind of looking for. So we could go through and do this entire process like this. And again, this is a process called resurfacing. And it's using the high-res model as but basically a template to uh, model over the top of. So I just wanted to introduce you to that concept. It does take a little bit of time to resurface things. Um, you have to practice this um, quite a bit to get things to uh, you know match the shape that you're looking for. And you can see that this this would work pretty good for an organic shape. Now. The shape of what we're doing is not quite so organic, so I'm going to show you in another video how we can just use our high-res model as a template and figure out what's the most important pieces that we might need to model and think about making a uh, game res model that's really efficient and only has the amount of polygons that we need for the entire thing.